Well, we knew right away. As soon as he was born, the, the doctor in the delivery room had mentioned that he saw some signs of Down syndrome. The service coordinator for my son, uh, who coordinates all his services, his therapies and things like that, recommended uh, Envision. We have a speech therapist. Right now he's trying to form words. There's the physical therapist that'll help him with the exercises to get his muscle tone up a little bit. I try to incorporate into the therapy with the child uh, what the other therapists are doing as well. I mean, I focus on the social, emotional, and the cognitive areas, but I also try to include encouraging speech, positioning them correctly so that the physical therapist's goals are met. I also try to flag issues. So if I see some issues with the child's, you know, fine motor or gross motor, I might say, I think they might need uh, to get this assessed and I work with the parent. Uh, every week after the therapist comes we will look forward to trying the suggestions from the therapist and also um, we look forward to everything that he does that's new. We want the best for him, we want him to be the best that he can be and we'll do anything to help him to get to that. I would definitely suggest Envision to any parent who has kids with disabilities. I believe that it's helped my son tremendously. Well, actually I had started off with another agent and then once we um, realized Joshua was a special need kid, they transferred us over to CARC, which is now Healthy Vision, and that's how I became part of that family. They were very organized and sufficient in their work. If I had a problem or any concerns, they addressed it. We were able to work and get Joshua the early intervention, the schooling, and the help that I needed for his needs. Joshua, he is just, he's lovable. Jeremiah is so intelligent, and Jalea, she's very outgoing. And, and she's comforting, and she's very helpful. And she loves to show affection. She's very affectionate. They're outstanding for me. I mean, they're just, they're wonderful. <laughs> I love them. Just like if I would have had them. These are my three kids. Envision has taught me through the access to all these people and all these different spaces as to how dynamic we have to be to respond and that you know our programs can't remain sort of one way, that they have to constantly shift and adapt. What's your favorite thing to do? Just push it. How do I find out more about someone who's nonverbal? How do I meet their needs if I don't have a vocabulary? When a client arrives new to West Town Center, my staff, and myself included, will spend a, a period of about 30 days with that individual to get to know that person and the, the kinds of activities they might enjoy, the, the objectives they might have in, in becoming independent. We do um, different activities from we uh, and Zumba. We also do what we call our parachute games and that kind of promotes hand-eye coordination. We also do cooking classes where we actually get our produce from the garden that we have in our horticulture program. Just working outside and working with your hands, you know, planting a seed and seeing a plant grow and getting something that you can eat yourself. Um, it makes you feel good. Just getting the sunshine and the fresh air makes you feel good. I have one client that does the watering for me. He's really good at it. He likes the heat. He doesn't mind if it's hot out. He'll stay there until every bed is watered. He's been doing a really great job. I'm really proud of him. The art program has, has given our clients a tremendous amount of confidence in themselves to, to find other ways or venues to communicate. 
um, what what's going on either emotionally or you know just maybe at home with that person so this this program provides another venue or form of expression for those individuals and we have seen as a result behaviors are low we, we have very few people who are unable to communicate their needs either through words or through artistic expression. Our clients love getting out into the community. The Chicago Weaving School is one example of our clients in, in the community in expressing themselves through art with other individuals in the community. Uh, my name is Douglas Grew. We're here at MSA and Circus Arts, which is a professional training facility for circus. We're here today doing a sort of a first-time pilot program of uh, working with the clients of Envision, uh, exposing them to circus. We have had circus programming here at Envision, and it has been incredible. Do I think it's important to train our clients to be circus performers? I absolutely don't. But do I think that a program that helps them improve their self-esteem and their sense of self and provides them a venue to show the larger community their capacity and the larger community their talents, I think that's vital. When you're learning to participate in a multi-person act, you are using communication skills, you're using sequencing skills, you're using following direction skills, you're using all those things that help make us successful in all kinds of capacities outside in the community. I've never worked with this population before. I've taught adult circus, I've taught youth circus extensively, the American Youth Circus Organization. It's been amazing because you never know who's going to take to what. A um, lot of the decision making with where we go is based on the client choice. They will talk with their staff to see um, or to determine what places they would like to go out and, and visit and that's how we, um, we plan our schedule of activities. When you visit our seniors program you're going to see a lot of sofas, recliners, um, activity tables. It's there for their choosing. If they wish to kick back and relax and sit on a recliner, it's there for them. They are, after all, in their retirement years. They've, they are finished with their working phase of their life, and they want a place to literally kick their feet up, have a cup of coffee, socialize with their peers. The biggest obstacle we face in job placement, employers fearing the unknown, that they are afraid to hire people with um, disabilities. But we do have great employers like the Shad who are willing to take that chance with us to see what these individuals can bring to the table. Well, he, he, he primarily does bagging and, and getting carts, but he's great with customer service. Customers love Fred. He's been here for 14 years, and they identify Jewel Osco with Fred. I think all, all companies as big as the next one, Shadowport, it should include everybody, give them the opportunity to it, because it's, they can do a lot of things. Yes, Marvin is a keeper. Everybody fights for me. Like, I want Marvin. Can I get Marvin? They want him transferred so bad I put up a fight. You can't have him. I moved to my own place. What help? What help with my budgeting and cooking and budgeting and housekeeping? Sports, huh? Yeah. Who's your favorite team? Well, I, I, I like the Bears, dude. But, <laughs> but now I'm, I'm waiting on for the Bulls. Uh oh, we waiting on the Bulls? Yeah. You play basketball too? Yeah, I do. If, if I play basketball, I'll probably be like Doug Rose. <laughs>
We have 28 group homes throughout the city of Chicago. And these homes blend into the community. They look like any house that you and I would live in. And again, they're small and they're in communities all over so that people have a true opportunity to be a part of those communities. The, uh, the difference between the intermittent or the ICE solar program and the 24-hour solar program is the level of support that the residents receive. The intermittent um, participants, for the most part, live in the community, uh, most often in apartments, individually or with perhaps another resident that's their roommate. We do have individuals that have 24-hour supports that aspire and are working towards maybe going to an intermittent support level. We have individuals, oftentimes, that are aging, that have been in our intermittent programs for many years that are starting to need more supports. They might go into our 24-hour um, SILA setting. But the biggest challenge for providers such as Envision here in Illinois is the level of state funding that we receive. The state funding does not meet our basic needs. Um, it falls short at about nine months, and so a quarter of the year of our services are provided unfunded by the state. The level of services that the state does support during the, the period of time uh, that that our reimbursement covers, it's only basic level services. And here at Envision, we have not found that to be sufficient, and we've had to look for many ways to augment our services and enhance our services. We are continually thinking of ways to change. If there's opportunities that present itself here in Illinois where we might be able to provide additional programming to more people, we will look into those opportunities. Envision has many areas of focus going forward. The, the most important and crucial are to continue to develop deep, rich programs so that individuals have choices about how they spend their lives and what they can do to enrich them and live them to the fullest. And certainly the other thing that we want to try and bring is much more community involvement. We're changing lives and we're empowering people and we are committed. There isn't um, a surgery or a medication that's going to change the life of our client. But if indeed they realize that we can change them because we care, we respect, we give them work, we educate them, we help them to create a better and a fuller life. I want to say to Envision's clients, each of you lives with the challenge. And many people in life don't face challenges like you do. But you also have great talents that make you special people. You're all extremely brave or you wouldn't be here today. You're hard workers. Some of you have intellectual and artistic abilities that others don't see. And our city and world are better because of you and Envision and what you've been able to achieve together. 